What's new in the land of the Durham report and the different trials that are set to start? I think the 16th, so Monday, I think that this trial is set to start as well. Uh, Michael Sussman, the only guy who's been charged in correlation with any of the findings of Durham's probe, or at least the filings that he's released. Whatever has been caught up, okay? But this is drug in the attention of Hillary Clinton, which, of course... um it's got to be a big old red flag for Durham, of course, but it's not getting the proper attention and we're not going to be able to watch the trial unfold in and of itself because it's a federal trial that's going on and there's no audio recordings, no video recordings that are immediately made for press. So we have to just wait and see the notes that come out and what we have here on the eve of said trial. New DOJ notes reveal FBI panic after Trump tweeted he knew he was being spied on. Uh oh, it's almost like they knew they were caught. And the FBI knew that they were caught. In fact, that they were maybe concealing some information that said lawyer planted. And that gave them pause for a moment. Interesting. Newly released notes taken by high-level Department of Justice officials during the March 6, 2017 meeting with FBI leadership exposed some of the lengths the FBI went to to cover up its spying of the 2016 campaign of Donald Trump, former and future president Donald Trump. The notes were released on May 8th by lawyers representing former Hillary Clinton campaign lawyer Michael Sussman as part of the effort to clear him on charges of having lied to the FBI. Hmm. The notes, in reality, appear to do little to exonerate Sussman, but do provide quite a bit of information on the FBI. The meeting at which the notes were taken as uh, oh took place just two days after Trump's uh, March 20 or March 4th, 2017 tweet, in which he accused former President Barack Obama of having wiretapped Trump Tower. I remember that all too well. Trump's tweet panicked FBI leadership who were unsure exactly how much Trump knew about their efforts to tie him to Russian collusion allegations. With the notes reveal in response to the treat or to the tweet, sorry, uh, they tried to cover their tracks. In March of 2017, FBI leadership already knew uh, with a near certainty that the Trump-Russia collusion claims were a hoax. So in March of 2017, the FBI already knew that it was bullshit. They already knew it was bullshit. And then after that, we still had the fucking Mueller probe and all of that hysteria. And still, till this day, we have the fucking calls that Trump was a Russian or he's he's Putin's puppet. He's a Russian asset. He's a Russian spy. It was all horseshit. The FBI knew it from the fucking go. Ugh. We knew that the Clintons campaign that planned to vilify Trump by portraying him as a puppet of Putin. Oh, there it is. The FBI also knew that not a single claim of the so-called Steele dossier, oh yeah, the Russian P-tape, y'all remember that as well, it was a primary source of the allegations of Trump's Russia collusion had checked out. Yep, not a single fucking moment of that horseshit dossier was ever proven to be true, accurate, or a clear representation of reality whatsoever. In fact, at that point, the FBI had already spent three days interviewing Steele's primary source, Igor Dunchenko, who disavowed pretty much every claim in the Steele dossier. The FBI also knew that the uh, Alpha Bank story, which claimed that the Trump server was communicating with a Russian bank information uh, that had been brought to them by Sussman, was bogus. In short, the FBI knew that all the claims of the Trump-Russia collusion had proven to be fake. But things took a sudden dramatic turn on March 4th, 2017, when Trump wrote on Twitter that he knew that Obama had wiretapped Trump Tower. Oh, fuck! How did he catch that? We thought that he was just a bumbling idiot who just managed to slip on every fucking banana peel and somehow magically do a fucking double backflip and land perfectly on his feet. Maybe he's not that bumbling asshole that everybody thought that he was. Maybe, in fact, he was playing some sort of 4D chess. Go fucking figure. A very public claim of spying that set off alarm, bar or alarm, uh, alarm bells, easy for me to say, with both the FBI and the DOJ leadership. Trump's tweet so alarmed the DOJ and FBI officials that the topic dominated the meeting two days later that included FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe and Acting U.S. Attorney General Dana Bonetti. I don't remember her. That's nice, though. The problem for the FBI was this. They didn't know how much Trump actually knew about their actions. They just knew that he was being spied on. Uh, just the day earlier, on March 3rd, ra uh, radio host Mark Levin oh, I told, oh, had reported that the Obama administration had obtained Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act a warrants that involved Trump and several of his campaign advisors. Levin also reported that Trump's off-the-cuff joke in a... Uh, Oh, July of 2016. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. 
Remember when Hillary Clinton didn't, according to fact checkers, acid, wa acid wash her server. Oh, excuse me, Mrs. Clinton didn't specifically put her hard drives in acid? So that claim is false. Oh, God, my det your detestation for the media runs deep. Anyways, uh, the FBI was actively spying on Trump campaign and the upcoming Trump administration's transitions communication, as the fact was also revealed in the new notes. Oh, the FBI had not only spied on Trump campaign advisor Carter Page, but also another aide, George Papadopoulos, uh, going as far to lure him to London when they tried to set him up in a clumsy but elaborate sting Sorry, what? There are also false accusations brought forward by Sussman that Trump was tied to the use of the Russian Yoda phone. Oh, right, we touched on that a couple of videos ago. Oh, they're exclusive phones that only certain people in uh, Putin's inner circle gets. But they're actually like one of the most popular forms of communications and they're readily available around the world, not just in Russia. And that is a matter of tech executive Rodney Joffe, a man with deep ties to the FBI, who had been using his access to the non-public non data to spy on Trump at both Trump Tower and at the White House. In all likelihood, Trump probably knew what Levin had reported that day before. Yeah, because that's where Trump gets most, if not all, of his talking points. He might have changed a little bit recently, but, you know, hey, back when he was the president, and then even when he was campaigning, he would take everything from talk shows, from, you know, conservative uh, media outlets, Rush Limbaugh, okay, Alex Jones, when he was still on broadcast at Radio Waves as well, and then Fox News, that's where he got all of his talking points from. And Mark Levin, he would have either been on his radio show or on his Fox News show. That's when Trump would have heard about it, so that's when he would have tweeted. And then, of course, the FBI and DOJ, being as jumpy cucks as they are, would have just spurred into action. That's what kicked all of this shit off. Now, the discussion on March 6th, the meeting, was dominated by Trump's tweet, with the FBI's McCabe kicking things off by stating that the Bureau was trying to determine what was behind Trump's tweet. I don't know, him just turning on the television? Uh, notes that the meeting were taken by three DOJ officials, uh, Tashina Guhar, Mary McCord, and Scott Schools. That's a beautifully alliterative name. And notes were released because one of the notes appears to show that McCabe stated that Sussman had rep uh, represented clients uh, when he told the Alpha Bank allegations to the FBI. Oh, God, sorry. Uh, if you're trying to do some, like, collusion or act in a treasonous manner, never write it down. Always have your communications in face over the phone. As a wise man once said, always in cash, never in writing. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Sussman initially told the FBI that he didn't represent anyone. That was merely acting as a good Samaritan. Yeah, but the notes would indicate otherwise. Anyways, uh, that was a lie to the FBI by Sussman, who has been charged with, and Sussman's lawyers are hoping to sow doubt and introduce that single sentence that appears to say otherwise. That uh, as the foundational piece of evidence and then of course all of the other ancillary claims as well claimed by Sussman's lawyers however uh, is in essence a sideshow as the notes are double hearsay evidence written six months after Sussman told the FBI the exact opposite yeah no exactly basically a big he said she said thing it's like trying to prove defamation without just having you know the most concrete of evidence it all just depends on who the grand jury is that's going to be in front of this okay or if it's specifically for a federal judge to decide it's got zero chance of ever materializing. It's a very weak claim. And the fact that this is somewhat fucking F-tier lawyer that they're going after. It's just interesting what's been coming out of this um, Durham probe. Not so much the results so far because they've been, you know what, hey, honestly, lackluster. But we'll see what happens. And we'll see what kind of reporting we get out of this trial that's supposed to kick off. Yeah, I, I think it was May 16th, right? But we'll see. We'll see. Real bombshells are in the majority of pages that the notes assessment doesn't cite. Uh, the notes reveal the true extent of the FBI's panic over Trump's tweet. The first reaction uh, from FBI leadership appears to... Oh, I've been to tell the acting attorney general, Bonetti, a sequence of lies about their investigation. The notes reveal that the FBI repeatedly referred to Steele's dossier as crown reporting, suggesting that the dossier represented some sort of official UK government intelligence and that mostly... Oh, information made up by Steele and Denchenko, a fact the FBI already knew at that time. The new notes also reveal FBI agent Peter Strzok lied to the DOJ superiors about what triggered Alexander Downer, 
okay, an FBI ambassador in London to come forward to the FBI with information regarding his meeting with Papadopoulos. Uh, it's always been the FBI's official story that Downer, who initiated the Trump official, oh, the official Trump Russia investigation, but uh, that story is now undermined by the new notes in which Strzok claims that Trump's joke about Russia's finding Clinton's emails that had triggered Downer. In truth, Downer had come forward before Trump had even made the joke. Huh, huh, interesting. The FBI, the FBI also lied to the DOJ about Carter Page's FISA warrant, uh, which they claimed was fruitful and that they are, uh, actually had revealed nothing nefarious, something the FBI was also aware of at this time. The FBI appears to have also tried to misrepresent and alleviate the Alpha Bank allegations by claiming that the Trump Organization had sent a solicitation to the Alpha Bank. Again, this was completely false, and the FBI, within the days of Sussman giving the Alpha Bank data uh, that is useless and probably fake. By September 23rd, 2016, the FBI's IT team had disproven the Alpha Bank allegations. Ooh, that's a big one. But rather than admit it, the FBI tried to breathe new life into the Alpha Bank allegations through its misrepresentations. All of these exculpatory facts were not just hidden from interim DOJ officials at the March 6, 2017 meeting, but FBI leadership also twisted those facts to make them appear like they were a strong case against Trump when they knew that they were you know, that they had no case at all whatsoever. Uh, but the March 6th meeting was only the beginning, knowing that Trump might now be on to them. Yeah, obviously. Obviously, he's the fucking president by this time. Meeting uh, was only the beginning, knowing that Trump might be on to them. The yes, FBI leadership immediately increased their efforts to cover their own tracks by intensifying their focus on Trump. Enter Adam Schiff, I would imagine, with I got the documents, Captain Crazy Eyes. On March 5th, 2017, the day following Trump's tweet, the director of national intelligence, James Clapper, went on CNN and, I don't know, fucking cried or some horseshit, and claim that the FBI, oh, and claim that there is no wiretap activity mounted against President-elect at this time, or as a candidate or against his campaign on March 5th? Wouldn't have he already been sworn in by that point? Oh, yeah, no, right, sorry. Uh, it was just poorly, word, uh, poorly worded, quote, at the time he was President-elect. We don't spy on sitting presidents, just uh, President-elects, which we didn't do, by the way. While Clapper took the defensive stance, the FBI soon went on the offense, and the Bureau's efforts almost be oh, began almost immediately. Yes, and as is noted, on March 15th, 2017, FBI Director James Comey suddenly decided uh, to brief the leaders of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Grassley, Feinstein, about Carter Page's FISA application, and the FBI leadership believed Trump had found out about it. Comey went on to provide them with copies of the actual FISA warrant. Two days later, at the same time, Comey also began briefing of the congressional gang of eight, the eight individuals within Congress who were briefed on the classified intelligence matters in the executive branch regarding the page FISA. Yeah, if you want to see a horseshit of an investigation and the fallout of that, that entire saga has been covered well, and it finished up, and I'm pretty sure most of it all wrapped up before I even had a channel, but... That was an entire fuck up in and of itself. But yeah, no, that'll about do it here. The rest of this is just like a, a recitation of events. It's on the screen if you want to read it and just go ahead and press pause and read it at your own leisure. But yeah, these these notes and these admissions seem like they could lead somewhere. Are they terribly relevant in this specific case? Maybe not, not not so much, not really. It's not really a big trial per se, but all things considered, is it the tip of the spear, like uh, Durham is claiming? Perhaps, but we'll have to wait and see how everything, or how all the chips fall. With all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. Watch to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.